can I ask, so what about your protocol and have you changed your diet since you've done this research and what you kind of, what, what's your kind of go-to diet? Well, we did have to um, look when we were starting our human study at uh, how the, all these branched amino acid produced beverages that we prepared um, tasted. And so we actually did quite a bit of work on trying to uh, mask some of the bitter tastes of free amino acids, which is one of the reasons that nobody uh, does a uh, methionine restriction, for instance. You get, you get a very bitter uh, metallic taste um, if you eat a kind of powder-based food um, that, that has no methionine. So, um, you know, however, translating that to home is a little bit difficult. So I definitely um, did experiment a little bit uh, for a while trying to have lower branch amino acid um, foods. But, um, you know, overall, I think it's pretty difficult with natural source diets. And so longer term, one of the things that I'd like to be able to do is um, design some natural source diets that are lower branch amino acids. And as you pointed out, it'd be nice to have foods you know, like the impossible burger where we could have an impossible um, burger that is lower in amino acids that uh, we want to, want them to be so that they can be healthier. Yes, although the, then it's very processed. I mean, it... you got lot, lots of trade-offs, right? <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, and I suppose we could also talk about, you know, environmental trade-offs too, right? The impossible burger should be better in some ways because you don't have to uh, feed animals um, who are producing methane and so on. So can I ask what kind of exercise do you do to kind of maintain your good health? Um, exercise. Well, you know, I bicycle to work whenever the uh, weather allows. So, um, and, uh, you know, definitely some walking, but, uh, you know, primarily we're focused on diet, not, uh, not exercise. So far. Right. Yeah. So a more general question. So what do you find the most kind of exciting research in longevity at the moment? Well, I think uh, generally speaking, most scientists would tell you that the most exciting research is the research they're doing because, well, yes, uh, you know, of course. if they, they didn't find it exciting, it would be, uh, you know, they probably work on something else. So I think a probably a fairer question would be what some of the research you find most exciting that's not your own. Right. Yeah. Um, Sorry. And so, yes. you know, I think um, some of that work is definitely focused on um, the rapamycin field and trying to see whether rapamycin works in um, primates and dogs and um, clinical trials in humans. In fact, we're tangentially involved with some, some of the uh, human translation efforts. Um, and I think so. So I think that's very interesting. Certainly, I think there's a lot of hype around um, reprogramming. And, you know, if we could definitely reprogram um, in vivo, as some recent studies suggest, I think um, that would be really fantastic. Um, and so I'm really interested in seeing how some of that work uh, pans out. Uh, where can people follow your work and find out more about uh, your lab? Lamminglab.org or um, at Lamminglab on Twitter. Okay, uh, Professor Lamming, thank you so much for joining us today. It was a great pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much. Have a great day.